We turn now to the incredible story of a wahine tour caught up in the maze of a health system. A ruptured brain aneurysm is in layman's terms a brain burst. It's a silent condition that's swift and often fatal and it's affecting an increasing number of whānau. That's why the experience of Tony Hickman Strongman is miraculous. Carmen Pada here with this story of survival against the odds and just a warning, some pictures may disturb. Who would trust them after they kill you? There's still a lot of trauma there, eh, for your kids? How many times can you screw up so badly with one person? 43-year-old Tony Hickman's been living with diagnosed brain aneurysms for the past seven years. All this part is metal, titanium, and all this part is acrylic right to here. This pink acrylic head is an exact replica of Tony's skull, used to rebuild bone destroyed by infection after her second brain injury. Oh, so you've got this actual piece is actually in here. In here yeah. The aneurysms and resulting care she's received in the health system have left her permanently disabled and living on ATC. Three different types of seizures. Eat and drink too much, I have no stop button. I have no hot or cold feeling. Yeah, I forget things like... Um... But what continues to hurt Tony the most is the overwhelming feeling health professionals have continually failed in their duty of care for her. I play a very active part in my health because the doctors don't. I don't trust them, my kids don't trust them. From 2003 to 2006, Tony complained of headaches, loss of memory and balance, but doctors in her Kiri Kiri clinic and Whangarei hospital failed to explain her symptoms. In 2006, her condition worsened and doctors thought she may have multiple sclerosis or epilepsy, but refused to give her a specialised CT or MR angiogram used to scan for aneurysms. Kept going back to A&E and they would book me in on a Friday, pump me up on painkillers, and of course I'd be fine, I wouldn't have a headache by Monday, and they'd check me out. Then all week I'd have a headache and I'd go back. I mean, it was ridiculous. In August 2006, Tony complained of headache, vomiting, neck stiffness and blindness. A scan and lumbar puncture was normal and she was sent home. Then a month later, Tony deteriorated was getting quite scary and I just wanted them to do something. Another CT and spinal tap confirmed there was blood in her cerebral fluid, a sign of a ruptured brain aneurysm. Tony's condition was life-threatening, but she was driven to Auckland Hospital in an ambulance with her daughter Jackie, who was just 16 years old then. I kept getting up and I kept going over to my mum to hold my mum's hand. And I was trying to wake her up. Surgeons found blood on her brain and a complex giant aneurysm. During surgery, another critical rupture occurred. And then they came out and they told us that mum died on the operating table for like four minutes, but that everything was going to be all right. And then they wheeled mum out. Well, it's so dramatic. A person's well one day and dead the next. John Simcox, the longest serving neurologist in New Zealand. He retired a year ago but remains the medical advisor for the Neurological Foundation. It's a mechanical sort of problem. The, the berry aneurysms develop at, at a, an area of weakness where the artery is divided. A number of patients have a small leak from that very aneurysm and that gives a sudden onset of severe headache and that may be the time to investigate the patient. When an aneurysm ruptures, blood is released under high pressure, resulting in symptoms similar to instant meningitis, symptoms Tony Hickman had and were ignored. And about 30% of hemorrhages from these aneurysms are fatal on the first bleed and patients may not have any warning that they've had them. 
Most patients have only one small aneurysm, which can be monitored or treated by surgical clipping or by using a catheter coil to stop any bleeding into the brain. Tony's giant aneurysm could explain her neurological complaints before the rupture. How do you miss a giant aneurysm on a CT scan? Well, the difficulty is that giant aneurysms are may, may be only two centimetres across and they are close to the bones at the base of the skull and it may not be easy to separate the two. In 2007, after her life-saving surgery in Auckland Hospital, Tony opted to have two more aneurysms clipped. But a post-op infection in her skull damaged it, and she had to endure more surgery to fix it. Since then, Auckland Hospital's been monitoring her remaining aneurysms. At least a quarter of patients have some ongoing problems after these procedures. Can get seizures after any open operation on the brain, headache, difficulty concentrating, all the many sorts of things that can and do go wrong. John estimates 1 in 10,000 people will have an aneurysm and although there are some risk factors, in most cases it's unclear what causes them. Risk factors for bleeding seem to be smoking and raised blood pressure and both of those are manageable. 10 or 15 percent of patients have a family history and it's not any one particular gene and the genetics of it have not been sorted out. Sheer luck, miracle, call it what you like, yeah, that our daughter is still here. It was, it was pretty traumatic for all of us, all of us included. Lots of things changed. When my sister got sick. <laughs> Most of Tony's Fano are now living in Brisbane, but returned to Auckland recently for an unveiling. They believe they get better health care in Australia. I said, let's sue them or something. They can't just do, just wamble about doing these things and not be accountable for it. I mean, I'd get the sack if I was doing it in my job. They say it was only Tony's persistence that kept her alive and they're still angry about it. She would not have made it. She would not be sitting here now. And that is, that is a problem, that you have to insist. You have to be forceful. Pretty scary. Pretty scary after watching everything she's been through. Robin is being screened in Australia because of Tony and another relative with aneurysms. But Tony's children aren't being monitored here, even though Tony has requested scans for them. It's frightening for me. You know, if my, if my, my kids get a headache now, I'm terrified. John Simcock says individual screening is available in New Zealand, but it's expensive and cost is a factor. Do we need a screening program in New Zealand for aneurysms? No, we don't need a screening program. We need to be highly selective about the people that do have re recurrent scans, whether they're CT angiograms or MR angiograms, um, for aneurysms. But that needs to be sorted out on an individual basis and certainly not a population basis. When is it going to end for her because <laughs> She's done everything, like there's so many sicknesses that she's had. And I just feel like New Zealand doesn't do anything. I'd like an apology to my family, to my mum and my dad and my children and my husband. Before Tony's surgeries, she was working towards her dream career to be a full-time artist. Permanent brain injury from the treatment she's received means Tony can't remember how to create art or care for herself properly. Tony's 22-year-old son Tamati is her full-time caregiver and Jackie refuses to leave her mum while their dad works long hours to support them. They're here, running me to doctors and carrying me to the bathroom and 
worrying about every headache I have. Oh, yeah, it's been a war painting. Last month, two new aneurysms were discovered, forcing Tony's whanau in Australia to return home to help care for her. Despite years of struggling, Tony Hickman still believes she's one of the lucky ones. She survived a ruptured brain aneurysm. I'd like one doctor to sit down and explain to me what's going on with my full record, and I'd like to get a new surgeon, one that I can actually talk to, get these surgeries over and done with and get on with my real life. Well, the Auckland DHB has acknowledged the distress caused to Tony from the skull infection and has promised to review her file. They've also apologised for a recent mix-up with a scan appointment for her two new aneurysms. Chief Medical Officer Dr Margaret Wilshire said, I'm apologising to Ms Hickman Strongman on behalf of Auckland DHB. A senior staff member will, if Ms Hickman Strongman accepts the offer, phone or, if she prefers, meet with her and her whānau face-to-face -to, -face to convey this apology. Tony's GP at the Kiri Med Clinic didn't want to comment, but the Northern District Health Board Chief Medical Officer, Dr Michael Roberts, made this admission. I'm happy to offer Tony an apology for the delay in the making of her diagnosis. We would have wished that this could have been done more quickly so that her suffering was kept to a minimum. Both DHBs are keen to meet with Tony and her whānau to help ease their pain. Carmen Parahi went back to the whānau in Kiri Kiri for their reaction. It's from the Northland District Health Board. So two apologies then, so one from the Auckland DHB and one from Northland. I'm really happy to have that one from Northland, especially. That one took nearly eight years. That's one that hurt my family the most. Are you pleased about the apology? Oh, very, very pleased. Yeah. Very, very pleased because I thought we were going to hit a bureaucratic wall. I'm thankful for the apology.